Hey everyone, Catch'em All Collectibles here. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the idea of how much is enough. Is there such a thing as enough? Always striving for more. The fine balance between shooting for too much and always falling short and on the other extreme, settling for what you have and maybe being lazy and not trying to achieve your uh potential your full potential so yeah it's going to be a little bit of a deep video maybe uh you can see on screen we've got the hedonic treadmill people might also be familiar with it as hedonic adaptation and not only with respect to pokemon in your collection i think this is a very important topic broader into life um personal finance i've i've talked recently about my desire to bring more of my personal finance takes and personal finance discussions into pokemon and and this is one of them that is really applicable i believe um a couple notes i've got down here need i hear people say i need that card i need this grade uh and also impatience need and impatience are very expensive things and in general one should try to avoid fomo and greed so yeah there's a couple notes that i had down there but let me let me cover more of the hedonic treadmill the next uh slide or the next tab will also represent it in a different way but hedonic act hedonic adaptation is the basic theory or principle idea that one has a fairly set level of happiness and when you buy a new card say say you're chasing that jungle pikachu say you're chasing that jungle pikachu you go out and you buy it you're on that high you get that adrenaline rush that dopamine hit because you added a new card to your collection pokemon the brilliant marketers they are gotta catch them all i think back to that spoof episode of south park uh where the kids all get addicted to it and they're very good at making us want more and more and more the new flashy set the shinier card within a few days after you bought that new card added it to your collection so you, going going to the chart you first desire and then you strive for it you obtain it now you've obtained your card next step you enjoy it for a few days and then that little high that little adrenaline spike goes away over time it fades and even though the card is now in your collection you tend to almost forget in many ways because you get assaulted you go on youtube you go on facebook you go on uh discord and you see the new shinier cards that are out or you see some other person's collection piece and you just return to your normal baseline even though you've added that piece to your collection and then you desire more so you go through the cycle again you can see it's uh an endless cycle that we go through and on the need and the impatience thing when a brand new set comes out oftentimes i mean the past couple of years 150 180 dollars out of the gate and then historically speaking they tend to settle down as more reprints come and so yeah chasing chasing that high constantly and then returning to your baseline and then spending more money just getting into a vicious consumerist cycle of uh always chasing that adrenaline rush that's just the the overarching topic for the day that I wanted to talk about. And um, yeah, let me let me get to the next slide and that'll kind of show you like a different, more of a graphical representation. One thing with hedonic adaptation, with with respect to having a positive come into your life and then settling back to your norm, outside of Pokemon, say you buy a brand new car, say you get a bigger house, you get that same kind of trend. I recently bought a new car. It's been about six months. At the beginning of the year, you buy a new car. Every day, it's like, this one's so much nicer. I don't have to worry about the wheel bearings going anytime soon. I don't have to do brakes anytime soon. The tires are good for 50,000 miles. Um, but now six months in, it's kind of like, I'm almost noticing some minor negatives about it. And I, I completely forgot that like every day I drive it, every mile I drive it, I'm driving a 2022 instead of my prior... 20 whatever it was 2000 and 2010 or 2012 car that i was driving before um you really you really just adapt set that as your baseline and then it becomes like the expectation you, you don't really you kind of take for granted 
what you have and what used to be a positive and what used to be kind of a high for you just becomes the expectation. So it goes away. One thing hedonic adaptation, and this is getting a lot deeper than I'm going to get in this video. If people have major, I mean, I mean, silver lining to like, if you're going through a hard time in life, generally speaking, if you have a, a big breakup or if you have a medical incident of some kind or generally speaking people are able to cope and get through them and then return to some kind of mean level of happiness but again we won't go too far down that the main thing that i'm trying to say is trying to set goals for your own collection and trying to take stock of what you have how far you've come and just maybe maintain a higher level without having to constantly feed it without having to feed the beast so much just to maintain um trying to limit our consumerist tendencies and i mean commercials and and pokemon and all these companies all these companies out there fighting for consumer dollars they do everything they can to try to say you don't have enough you need more 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 fomo greed fear of missing out um they're they're constantly trying to capitalize on those things that one should try and temper um everyone has a limited amount of capital so no one can buy everything even though pokemon the phrase is gotta catch them all i've come to terms with the fact that i will never catch them all i've caught a lot of them i catch and release some of them so that i can catch more but you're never going to catch them all and i think it's very very important that we we all set goals for ourselves and we determine where we want to be where we want to end up and ultimately what is our enough? Because it is a very personal thing. There's no one right answer for everybody. Um, and I'll get in a little bit further. Some of my old forum posts where I actually set specific goals for each year and having achieved some of them. And yeah, I'll get into it in later slides. But uh, we're, we're continuing to build. Next, next slide, I, I get a little bit deeper into goal setting. And what um what that might look like and what this is actually kind of borrowing from my engineer history i was a chemical engineer it's been about a year that i've been doing this full time self-promotion next saturday I'll, I'll schedule it on my youtube but i'm gonna do a live stream next saturday night it will have been one year exactly that i've been off the books as a chemical engineer but back from my engineering days, I'm still uh, I'm going to carry that with me throughout my career as a Pokemon buyer and seller. But setting SMART goals, SMART being an acronym, standing for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. I think that setting SMART goals throughout your collecting journey or even your business journey, setting goals for how much you want to sell and gross, how much you want to net, how much you want to be able to pay yourself, save for the future. Maybe if you're saving in IRAs, 401ks, S&P 500 funds, things like that, not financial advice, but just have, have to throw that in there when I can. But yeah, setting smart goals, specific meaning, fairly obvious. I, I want to buy a jungle Pikachu. I want to buy a trophy Pikachu, whatever the card may be, knowing what you want. I think a, a big mistake a lot of people make, they come in, they just start buying everything without any clear direction. And then days, weeks, months, years later, they see a whole box tote, maybe a room full of cards that have no clear purpose and serve no real positivity towards them. They, they, you don't really appreciate them anymore if you haven't obtain them for a specific reason and and yeah maybe they were a good deal if you buy I mean, you can save a lot of money buying every sale that they throw at you but you end up with a bunch of stuff that you may may not have really wanted so targeting specific things that you think will maximize your value as far as happiness joy all that measurable i mean with this it's it's more more uh fitting for the engineering field measurable is like if i want to get a pikachu i either have it or i don't so it's like a, it's a binary one zero yes no you have it or you don't so you don't really need to measure it i guess if you want a thousand gold star greninjas something like that you can measure it by counting them i guess maybe if you get that many you measure them by weight but uh, achievable for me to say i want the psa 10 illustrator i would be setting myself up for failure 
it's it is specific it is measurable but it's not really achievable for me with my capital with the fact that there's one in the world owned by someone with a hundred times or more my net worth thousand times i don't even know but not remotely achievable so want and and greed and feeling like you need to have everything is very very common in our consumeristic society but there's a lot of joy that can be had and the illustrator is tough because even even the the lesser condition ones there's um it's a six figure plus card uh very very expensive that's that's the pinnacle of the hobby as far as dollars go i made a video last week talking on how i'd spend 20 million dollars uh most cards except for the very very high end 99 plus percent of pokemon cards are achievable for less than 10 dollars um if not less than a dollar 99% of them printed 99% of different set card variants. Um, go even, I mean, if condition is not needed to be in PSA 10, if, if you're talking a binder copy, if you're talking a, a levy light played, moderate played card, you can achieve almost any set card for $10 or less. The few handful that you can not almost certainly you can achieve them all for a hundred or less. That the, the handful that would stand out beyond that would be like some of the really high end gold star Rayquaza gold star first edition Charizard those would be hard to get but yeah almost anything is achievable if you put enough time and energy into chasing it eight years ago if you had told me I'd have everything I had and I'd be doing this full time that that wouldn't have been a smart goal for me to set in 2014 I want to be doing this full time next year um I I wouldn't have thought it would have been realistic to be done in um eight years but here we are i guess so achievable goals are are smart to set something within the scope of your collection something actually possible to obtain if your net worth is a hundred thousand dollars don't target a five million dollar card relevant if you're uh and, and these things are ever changing what's a smart goal today you might reevaluate you might change your goals you might Goals can change. They don't have to be firm. They don't have to never change, but relevant. If you're if if you're a Pokemon collector, don't make a goal to get a Kickstarter first edition MetaZoo box. Don't, I mean, don't make a goal. If, if you don't like Japanese cards, it doesn't make sense to go for the Illustrator because it's not even relevant to your collection. If you want to create the best, if you want to chase Gem Mint Pokemon and go for like the best PSA graded Watsi English collection of set cards. It doesn't make sense to, to waste your time or waste your money, waste your energy towards Japanese cards that don't um, don't further those goals. If you change your goals and you decide to add those in, like I found myself doing years ago, I mean, then then it can make sense. But another one is time bound. If you say, well, I want to own a card someday. That's not really time bound. It, in, in some like I, I would love to own a Japanese trophy someday. Cards like that that pop up so infrequently that are way too high of a percentage of my net worth. It's hard for me to say, honestly, a card like that, a card like that, like I would love to own a trophy Pikachu in the next decade. It's possibly achievable. It's time-based. Um, 10 years from now, pass fail. I will have, I will have obtained it or I will have not. Uh, it, it's not a huge goal for me. There are so many goals that are more realistic and more uh relevant to my collection goals more uh more achievable but yeah time bound you, you'll see in the next uh next couple slides that i show you there used to be original e4 i'll actually get into that now since we've kind of gone through the whole smart thing but yeah i think setting smart goals keeps you on track it keeps you maybe from fomoing into cards that you don't need I, could be risk if you're after just one card or one set of cards that don't pop up too frequently fomo is a bit tougher to avoid when you actually might miss out if 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 the card might not come up cheaper again like some of these trophies that are going up right now lately um but yeah the next slide let me get into some of the actual smart goals that i set for myself in the hobby so as i was saying e4 used to be e4 now it's called mount moon just rebranded um the two, two forums kind of split i haven't updated on on the new e4 yet but i will at some point but mount moon is is where my profile still exists my 5,000 posts still exist but anyways one of my favorite threads 
tra thread traditions that has been going on the past few years over at Mount Moon is um, annual goals posts. So in 2018, there was a post that I um, I wanted to work on completing my first edition WotC PSA 9 set. And I wanted to finish it and find a way to display it. And then a longer term goal was completing a gold star collection in PSA 9. So that was posted in January of 2018. Well, January of 2019, I came back and I said 2018 was a huge year. 20, 2018 was one of the biggest years for me. And let me know in the comments below if you want me to recap 2018 in, in more depth. Honestly, like some of the biggest turning points in my Pokemon collecting, Pokemon side hustle career that, that led me to where I am today doing this full time. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see that expanded upon. But uh, let me continue with this. Uh, so in 2018, I completed both those goals. I finished all my PSA 9 Watsi First Edition. I completed PSA 9 Gold Stars. Not only that, I opened the final box towards opening every English set. Holland Phantoms was the final one. And then... I also completed all the old school EXs in PSA 9. That was one major collection buy that I bought that allowed me to finish the old school EXs and gold stars. And then um, 2019 goals that I set were to complete Level X Legend, Black White Secret Rares, Prime, Call Legend, Shiny, all in PSA 9. Big goal, but it's, it's smart. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. I wanted to complete them in the bounds of 2019. And long term, keep up on Japanese promo releases. 2018 was when I started to buy a few cards, trophy cards. And then 2019, another goal. Um, pursue further the trophy game. So from there, the next goal, or the next post that I made in October of 2019, my goal was to get a full art Pikachu trophy set one to four. And I came back a year later, about a year later, November of 2020. I had completed the set in one to four. So again, not saying just because you set a goal, you're guaranteed to achieve it. But I think setting it and having it in your mind and having it being something that's a smart goal, I think you're more likely to achieve it. Setting it out specifically and just having it on your mind subconsciously. I mean, consciously at times when you're setting it, when you're writing it down, whatever you're doing. But it'll just work in the background in your subconscious, I think, as well. So you're more likely to achieve it if you're consciously making that effort to define it and set bounds of it and set a time frame for it. Twenty twenty one, I must have missed that thread, and I mentioned it right here. I can't believe I didn't post in last year's thread. My twenty twenty goal went really well. That was the full art Pikachu's, and. I just kind of mentioned that I didn't set any goals for 2021, at least not on the forum, but they probably would have been to fill out binders and get more organized, which I didn't do. Uh, and then my goal for 2022 was just rolling that over and then continuing to meet new people. And I, I'm smashing that so far, having been to two Collecticons, going to Denver as well, meeting so many people and shout out the, uh, the Pokenomics Patreon and the Discord that we run there. next. This Sunday, when you see this, July 31st, 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern, I'll be doing a presentation going into the recent print run data, as well as working through some discussion on the grading companies, where their backlogs stand, where their turnaround times stand. Um, feel free to subscribe to the Patreon and check that out if you want to. But <clears throat> yeah, the people that I've met through there, the people that I will be meeting later this year in Denver collecting friendships, collecting uh, acquaintances and meeting new people is uh, one of my biggest goals, constant ongoing goals for the hobby, just to expand my, expand my business, expand my reach, but also expand my, uh, my uh, friendships, expand my relationships with people that share the same passion in Pokemon. Um, last thing I wanted to touch on showing my Instagram here. Uh, the whole how much is enough 
Social media. I think it's great as far as what I just said. Reaching out, meeting new people, sharing interests with people. But it can also be very, very tough too. When you scroll through someone's social media feed, this is my Instagram, what you're seeing is a curated, outward-facing picture that is designed to show successes. Don't compare your everyday and don't compare your collection to someone else's curated version, best uh, curated version of their best selves or their best pieces of their collection. I don't even own all these cards anymore. Most times when you scroll through an Instagram, you're seeing cards that people might not even own anymore. I do own the one and the three. I don't own the scroll anymore. Um, the two and the four that pop up later, where do they come up? Right there. I don't own the two and the four anymore. I sold the rusty. But yeah, this is my wins. This is my highlight reel. If you're having a hard time looking at someone's highlight reel and thinking, I wish I had all that, not setting smart goals, just envying. And that's not a good way to live life. Th this goes for Pokemon, Instagram. This goes for Facebook. This goes for like real life too. Other people's relationships, other people's um, kids, other people's vacations. What you're seeing, you, you don't know what their day-to-day -day is. You don't know what they go through on their day-to-day. -day. Um, everyone just wants to make everything look all perfect and amazing and awesome. Avoid the whole keeping up with the Joneses. Uh, avoid overspending and trying to just chase what you think other people want to see. I do this for me. I do this to just curate my history, my involvement with the hobby, where I've been, where I'm headed to. I hope nobody sees this and thinks like, oh, I'll never have as much. I'll never. Th that's not anything about. I mean. Social media is a lot of flexing and a lot of like negativity around that type of stuff, but that's not my intent. And I hope it, it doesn't come across that way. But yeah, one thing I've recently found too on the topic of the video, how much is enough? In many ways, I have too much. My favorite cards in my collection, I don't even have with me. I don't even see them day to day, except for Instagram, except for if I scroll here. That's part of why I put it here too. A lot of these things live in a safe deposit box or the PWCC vault. And in many ways, I want to pare down my collection to something that can fit in a briefcase or something that can fit on a shelf of binders. And over the years, I will do that because I've found in many ways just I have too much. Not only I overshot enough, there are different things that I want that I'd love to have someday, and maybe I will. But in many ways, I've overshot enough. And it's great when I sold off my ETB collection. When I made this post, I had a complete ETB, ETB collection. To, uh, to current, you can see uh, Plasma Storm all the way up to Darkness of Blaze was, was the newest set, or Champion's Path, sorry, was the newest set. And to sell off those pieces and hear from people who were completing their full uh, ETB collection was great, was great to hear. Um, because for me, I, I couldn't display that either. So yeah, kind of went all over the place here in this video, but definitely... Takeaway topics are try to temper your consumeristic desires for more, more, more constantly. Generally speaking, even once you obtain those grails, once you, you're going to kind of return to your set level of happiness to some extent. Um, it's going to be great. It's going to be an amazing feeling, crowning achievement to get those cards. But then a week, a month, a year later, once that part of your collection is complete, your life's not magically going to change if you were unhappy. Don't try to fill voids if there are voids in in your life with consumeristic goods, with with Pokemon cards. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe it'll work where you just step up to a new level. But generally speaking, I, I find this to be quite true. And uh, the deepest, the, the best things that I've gotten out of these hobbies aren't shown on my Instagram generally. It, well, I say that. Let me scroll all the way up. This is the type of stuff that's the best. Um, and with this, there's not really enough of this. A few times a year, meeting up with the guys, hanging out. That's the best part of the hobby for me. That's what I look to expand upon moving ahead. This uh, this short here that I had, um, pulling the chars out on stream with the 12 guys on PK. PK's live. That was awesome. So, yeah. 
um all over the place let me know what you thought with this video does it make any sense was it a bit too rambly do you want to hear more conversations like this um every day i, I try to consciously step off the hedonic treadmill take stock in what i have friends family my my house my my wife kids car all the things that i've improved over the past decade and just not take for granted what i have because i've come a long way and i've been on so many of these highs that i don't want to just settle down and and yeah take taking things for granted it definitely is not a great thing whether it's your collection whether it's something deeper in life but uh yeah i think i've gone on long enough way overshot the uh the youtube 10 to 12 minutes that they like to see i think that's it though check my notes here and i hit everything uh yeah let me know what you thought in the comments below check out pokenomics patreon next sunday the 31st from one to four i'll be doing a presentation and in the discord pretty much every day always feel free to ping me there office hours every week ebay affiliate link below like and subscribe if you like what you heard and i'll catch you all later